Hey y'all and welcome to my craft room. Today I am bringing y'all, I think it's four, maybe five spring Easter themed related crafts and it's going to be part of an open playlist. It's called Spring Fever and the host of the playlist are Six Kids in a Glue Gun, Lady Red Crafting, and the guest host is DIY with Amber. Of course, I'm going to have a link to their channels as well as to the playlist in the description box below. I hope you check it out because um, if you need inspo for spring and Easter, and who doesn't? So that's where you'll find it. <laughs> Anyways, let's just get on to the DIYs. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. All right, kicking it off with DIY number one. I have this canvas that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm just removing the canvas because I don't need it for this project. And I don't know, it just seems like it's harder and harder to remove the canvases, but maybe it's just me. Once I got the main part of the canvas off, I am just kind of cleaning it up. I try to remove the staples that I can and you know, any of the little pieces of canvas that are left over as I remove stuff just trying to clean it up. Now this mesh wire thing is actually a trash can from Dollar Tree and I had just cut it up so that I could use it kind of as faux chicken wire and I'm trying to cut it down to size to get it you know to fit the size of that canvas frame wood frame. To make it look like I don't I was wanting it to look like rusted old chicken wire and so I'm just taking a mixture of silver metallic paint, kind of a um, rusty brown paint, and then a darker brown paint, and a sponge that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm just kind of dabbing it all over. And it, it's really hard to see if you got good coverage, but, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I am going to be making a little sign, a little bunny sign. Oh, I got help from Neil. Anyway, I'm trying to see how big that... Um, the bunny is going to be on that side and so I'm just cutting out some cardboard and then I'm taking a little bunny, this wood bunny that I got from Dollar Tree in a little pack and I'm using that kind of as a guide so that I can trace out or sketch out a larger bunny that's going to fit inside that cardboard piece because I know that'll fit into the um, thing. And there's Neo. Neo's always trying to be up in my business. And then I just used that terracotta pot to kind of make sure that the bottom was more rounded because I felt like it was a little bit off. And then I'm just going to cut that out. This is literally a, um, a cereal box that I'm using. It's not even regular cardboard. I mean, that's cardboard, but it's a cereal box. It's a Cheerios. See, you can see the back of the, the one I have there on the left. Anyway, now I took this little piece of tarp just kind of ripped it off the bigger piece of tarp that I got. I think I got it from Walmart, maybe Lowe's. And I'm just using my rubber stamps and I am carefully, um, <laughs> very carefully putting on the words hop on over. And I didn't want the frame to be just natural wood. I wanted it to be a little, you know, dingier looking I guess so I stained it with Waverly Wax in the color antique. I'm gonna paint the bunny and I probably should have painted the other side but I didn't. I painted the back side <laughs> and I'm just using some um, I think it's the color milk jug actually and I'm just sponging on the color onto the little cardboard bunny cutout that I have there and I had some Waverly Wax left over on that little sponge brush. So I'm going around and distressing the edges of the cardboard bunny. Now I'm making sure that this wire mesh thing is gonna fit because one time I had tried to cut out uh, the wire mesh and then it shrunk on me overnight. So I let this one set for a while to see if it was gonna shrink or anything after I put paint on it. It didn't really, so I don't want any overhang though. So I'm trying to make sure that it's within the confines of that, um, that frame. And I'm going to use a ton of hot glue to secure this down. And so I'm putting a ton of hot glue and I have these popsicle sticks that I just cut off the edges. And as you can kind of see, I'm going to be using them as braces all around. And I will have to cut one to size in just a minute here, but 
it's all fitting pretty nicely. And, um, well, I kind of burned my finger there. <laughs> so be careful when you're using hot glue, but I'm just making sure that that hot glue, um, the wire frame is sandwiched between the frame and the, the popsicle sticks. So now we're going to put this all together. And I didn't really think this part through because, um, like what's that, what's that tarp going to attach to? So I used the extra popsicle stick pieces that I had left over and I'm using that so that I can kind of glue that tarp to the frame and that's working fine. And then when it comes to the bunny, I was like, okay, I'm going to need something for the bunny, you know, and that's where, see, it's a Cheerios. <laughs> A box of Cheerios. I should have painted that side, but anyway, I didn't. And then I didn't think about how to cover up the back. Yeah. But it still looks cute from this side. And then I'm taking three wooden carrots that I got from the Dollar Tree, painting the bottom portion with the pumpkin color, and then the top portion with some green paint. I do add in a little bit of a brown color to, you know, make the ridges or indentions of the carrot. And then I'm distressing the frame with some, I think it's antique white chalk paint. Just use my chippy brush and I'm going a little heavy handed. And if it, if I thought it was too heavy, I could have gone back with a brown color or something like that. But like I said, I wanted this to look rustic vintage, just kind of into that right now. So if you're not into that look though, don't do that part or paint the frame a whole different color. It's up to you. You can totally customize this to fit what you like and what your decor is. So then I'm taking this reindeer moss that I got from Dollar Tree. And y'all, it kind of smells to me. I don't know. If you've noticed the smell, comment below. Let me know what you think. But I'm just adding that to the bottom and kind of make it like he's in grass or whatever. And then I'm just going to place those carrots there and hot glue the heck out of them that, so they stay. Just to make this little decor piece, which I think will look super cute on a tiered tray. And this is how it turned out. It's so cute. I did add a little face. I mean, you know, there's not much to it. It kind of looks like a cat face. But <laughs> anyway, I also distressed a little bit more with some um, the Jim Holtz distressing ink. And kind of gave the bunny a little more rustic look. But I think this turned out super cute. This is a house shape that I cut out of that extra fencing material that I still have on hand. I'm using my chippy brush and I'm giving it a pretty heavy dry brushing. And I originally was just gonna go a little less, but anyway, I went a little heavy handed with it. And I covered the entire piece actually with the Waverly Wax in the, or Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Elephant. And then you either let it dry or make it dry. And I had cut out <laughs> these these words and I didn't use them. They didn't fit where I was going to originally use them. So I'm using them on this project and that's socks. And then Neo just came into frame, but socks have been hanging out a little bit more anyway. So I'm just adding it with my paper transfer tape. And then I take this really pretty blue color and I don't remember the, the exact color, but you can use any color you want. You could use green, you could use yellow, any color you want. I'm just choosing blue. And again, I'm going for that rustic look. So I am painting all over with that blue color. And then I'm taking a fan brush and some white paint and distressing it even more. And I still have those letters on there. We covered up the letters with the paint because I was using it as a stencil, kind of like a reverse stencil. So now I'm using that picker tool that I got from Dollar Tree and just removing all of the letters. And this is how it turned out. I, I, I really, really like it, but I feel like it looks a little plain. So y'all let me know in the comments below, what else should I add? Or do I need to add anything else to it? Or is it just okay, just like it is? Well, I've got you here. I hope you're enjoying the video so far, by the way. But while I've got you here, I wanted to mention that I have a crafting group on Facebook called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. It's linked below as well too. So be sure and check it out. Dollar Tree does sell these wood slice ornaments. You can also pick them up from Hobby Lobby, but I would recommend picking up from the his and her section when they're on sale. I didn't show this, but I painted the slices with linen chalk paint and just went around to kind of um, add some, 
I guess make it an even color because with the wood slices sometimes you see the rings more. Anyway, then I'm taking this pretty pink gingham ribbon and I'm making it into a bow. Very simple. And I kind of tried to find where the wood slice would stand up on its own and I put a dab of hot glue, put the ribbon there, cut those down a little bit, and then I'm going to wrap around the tails of the ribbon to the back to kind of make the ears stand up or hopefully try to make the ears stand up just a little bit more. And again, it's just a simple bow and I try to stand up the little wood slice so I can see, make sure it's standing up as it should. I hot glue the little ribbon on and then I just pull those tails to the back and I cut off the excess, but I try to make it so that the ears stand up a little bit more. Now y'all tell me why the little one, the little guy there, why is he, why is he like that? <laughs> I thought I hot glued in the right spot, but anyway, I mean, I guess he's just a little fun. And then the, the big, the big guy there or girl, I guess it's a girl. It could be a girl or a guy. It doesn't matter. But the, the bigger one, the bow's kind of like a little bit off to the side. That's okay. You know, it gives them their own little personalities, but this little bunny trio, I think turned out pretty super cute. All right, y'all. Here's the last project. I found these two kind of curved arch shaped signs at Dollar Tree with minimal glitter on it. I was like, what? So I did my trick of getting a soaking wet washcloth and laid it on and I did not leave it on long enough. And all I'm doing by not leaving it on longer is just making more work for myself. So remind me the next time I'm going to take the paper off of a sign just let it soak for a long time. Just let it soak because then it'll just peel right off or it usually does for me. So anyway, as you can see, I'm using a little blade thing to kind of peel off the excess. The longer you let it set, trust me, the easier it is to get off. Once it's all off, um, I did go with a little, I have a piece of sandpaper in my fingers. You can't really see it, but I'm just trying to make sure everything is smooth. This is actually going to be the back, but I still like it to be smooth and look finished out. Okay, y'all, here's where I try to get fancy, and I don't know why, because I'm not really a fancy person, but I am putting down a rust-colored um, brown paint, and then I'm putting a darker brown paint, and then I'm doing some, you know, little dots of black paint, and then I'm taking this sponge brush from the Dollar Tree, which I do not recommend, and about halfway through this process, I switch it out for a regular paintbrush. But anyway, I'm just going up and down, trying to make it look interesting, some depth, some different colors in it, and you can achieve this a lot of different ways, but I thought, oh, let me try this. Like, you know, just blending it that way. I mean, it turns out pretty. I like it, but it was just a little extra and I really didn't need to do it because you don't even really see the back. <laughs> I take folk art matte paint in the color linen and I'm going to paint this. But again, me trying to be extra, I'm taking some of that, what's that color? I just, I always forget this color. Anyway, look at me. Why am I, why am I doing this? I don't know. You can't even really tell that there's another color on there, but I don't know. They're just trying something different. This is the project that almost didn't happen because I could not find my cardstock paper and I kept trying to print this onto tissue paper with regular copy paper and it just kept almost messing up my, my printer. Anyways, I found the cardstock paper. I printed it out and I just found these images online and yeah. <laughs> so it's the Velveteen Rabbit story. And so I'm cutting off the excess and I end up almost cutting the top part off, but yeah, it works. But you just have to be really careful with tissue paper because it does rip so easily. Now we're gonna take some Mod Podge. I'm using the matte finish and I'm just going to be applying that to the front of both of these signs. And I was a little heavy handed with it, to be honest, but I mean, it's okay. It turns out fine, but you don't have to be quite so thick with that Mod Podge. And then once you get it coated, you can either let it dry or make it dry. Then I'm doing it. It's kind of a reverse Mod Podge type thing. I don't know, but you, you cover it with put it on a heat protected surface and then you cover it with parchment paper and then you take your little mini press or you could use your big press I guess but you use your little mini press and you kind of reactivate that Mod Podge 
and I did the same thing for both pieces. And once it was done, I was checking to make sure that the edges weren't coming up or anything, and they weren't. And then I wanted to distress it because I kind of wanted it to look old and vintage. I don't know why I'm in that kind of mood right now, but I'm trying to make stuff look old and vintage. So I took some of that um, extra paper there so I wouldn't get it all over my table. And I'm just using all the colors. I'm using a linen color. I'm using that chiffon color. And I'm using a brown color. I think that's um, truffle. And I, I was doing that around. I don't like that. And so then I'll go back with the lighter color. And then instead of like just dop, you know, dabbing it on, then I try to do like stripes and like swiping it on, just doing all the things, adding all the colors. I even pull out a green color because I thought that would look good with the bottom of the Velveteen Rabbit picture, you know, and just adding all the colors. And it was getting to the point where I'm like, oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no. Anyway, I was like, oh my gosh, I've just kind of messed this up. Like it's not turning out how I wanted it to, you know what I mean? So then I take some more linen color and some more truffle color and I'm just distressing because some of the linen color had got on the back of the sign. And again, you're not gonna see it, so who really cares? But anyway, I'm just going at, I'm adding more colors everywhere. Like I'm just going to town with the adding of the colors. <laughs> I think it turns out really pretty, but I just think it's kind of funny looking back at it now. Like, why are you adding so many colors? You're not even gonna really see the back, Lisa. Okay, so back to the front where I'm getting crazy with it. Now I'm just going to distress. See, it's getting like, what are you doing? This too dark of color. I don't know. It's just like not looking right. So I'm trying to add more of the linen to kind of lighten it up. But I do like it how it's dark. But I'm trying to bring a balance to it. And, um, you know, I even painted onto the actual tissue paper part, you know. And I was just, oh, no, I hope this turns out. And y'all, I can't decide if I like it or not. I'm going to be honest. I feel it's dark and I'm looking at it on my mantle right now, which is where I took this picture. It's still up there. And I like it from this distance. <laughs> but when I'm looking at it in this picture, I'm like, oh, this kind of like, it's not blended enough, I don't think. And it, yeah, I'm not sure if it's blended enough, but I, I'm going to trust you guys to give me some feedback in the comments. I mean, be gentle because, you know, it is something I created, but I am curious to know what you guys think. Um, besides like you should have stopped after the first color, you know, what I mean? because like, it's already done now. But should I try to go and distress a little bit more, but with a lighter color? What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think about today's video. Thank y'all so much for watching my video today. Be sure and comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already, because that helps me and it helps support my channel and I appreciate it. How about that? And if you want to check out some other videos, I'll have those linked somewhere around here. And if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok, my handle is Our Great House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!